Hi, my name is Diary. I'm running an adoption support channel for those who are interested in adoption, pre or post adoption. And um, this series is all about attachment. So also if you're just interested in attachment and stick around for this series. So I'm on video number four. There are three previous videos. Check out the playlist that I'm building if you're interested in seeing the build up to this. So the video number four is attachment in the early days. So I'd like to think of it up till about six months. I think these points will be relevant. When your child first comes into the home, you might find, you might feel that there's an attachment there immediately, that you get an immediate connection. And it feels like attachment is already there. Um, there may be immediate connection and I don't want to be the bearer of bad tidings but the reality is is a child can't build attachment immediately they need time to build that attachment and I would say for the first six months that would be a very tentative if you look back on my videos about this this glue it will be a very kind of like glue that's very easily snapped and broken and so really the child has not built a secure attachment with you even with the, within the six months I say that would be very 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 good going and it's not that usual because if you think about it they've come from a foster family or they've come from bear family and they're having to start again like to, to them you're a relative stranger even if you're amazing even if you're the best adopter in the world you're still a stranger to them and so they need to test out different things they need to know that they're going to be able to trust you so I would suggest that where possible, if there's two of you, that only one of you does the main, especially intimate care routines, but does the main routines. Now this can be quite hard on that person to start with, but I think you'll find that if one person does the majority of stuff, then the child will learn to attach to that person first and then they'll be able to attach to the other person. And sometimes a child will pick out their attachment figure. They will definitely gravitate toward one person rather than the other. So if you're the person they're not gravitating toward, please don't take that to heart. It could be there's something about the other person that reminds them of good things in their past or even something about you that triggers them and they don't even know why about something not so good. But they'll get over that. And all the research tells us is that if a child can make a really good, strong attachment with one person, they can then move on pretty quickly to start making other attachments. Now, of course, it might be quite tiring if you end up being that person who is doing the main routines. And you can still take a break. Like, I'm not saying that it has to be all the time. Um, it has to be 100% of the time. But as I say, try to lean toward one person doing the majority of things if you can. When they first come, it's really important to repeat enjoyable routines and things that are very familiar to them because you are trying to build a safe environment for them and that's part of attachment as well. So it's not just important that they start to feel safe with a person, but that person is also providing a secure and safe environment for them. And so if you give routines that they know are going to happen, they know when meal times are going to happen, they know they're going to get a bath or a shower every night, they know that they're going to do certain stories and things that they enjoy, then that familiarity will also give that, that feeling of security. And I think if you don't bring in too many new situations, you'll do a lot better, a lot quicker. So again, I'm not saying you can't um, introduce different family members and friends. I mean, you're going to need to do that to a certain extent within the first six months. But I do think if you limit it and you don't offer too many different new experiences to the child that they will settle a lot more quickly and learn to trust you a lot quicker. Because we're kind of aiming for the first six months to be as quick a bond and attachment as you can make really. And always during that time, you're looking to provide opportunities to strengthen that glue between you. So you're looking to use voice, physical closeness as much as possible, touch as much as possible. And so just think of that all the time in your routines that that's what you're trying to achieve. Now you may find that you have one of those children who as much as you're trying to build that attachment keeps trying to push you away and is very independent of you. And when it comes to that, you just have to keep on trying. So 
even if they look like they don't want you and they're very independent of you, you've got to think about sending the glue out from you, if you see what I mean, and trying to find ways of bringing them back in close to you. So if they just easily go off into another room and play on their own, not bothered whether you're there or not, just keep on talking to them, calling to them, saying, hi, I'm in the other room, I'm in the kitchen doing something, how are you? Go in and check on them. Like you make the effort to go to them if they don't appear to kind of need you. And then you might have the opposite situation where the, the child that you have just never wants to leave your side and is like stuck to you all the time, a bit like a newborn baby would be, is not prepared to leave you, chatting to you, engaging you all the time, you know, being quite demanding of your attention. As horrible as that can be, because it can be very, very draining, it's a very good sign that they're trying to build that early attachment with you in a very definite way. The only issue around that is some children don't really move on from that stage very easily. And those will be the children that are suffering most of all from severe uh, neglect and abuse and have had a pretty terrifying start. Those will probably be the ones that do this to you. So you've got to balance out their needs with your self-care. And there are gonna be times when you need to have breaks and respite and pass them on to other people because you're not gonna be able to maintain that. But where possible, just nurture them as much as they want to be nurtured and go with it, especially in those first six months, I would suggest. So in the long haul, the long, the long and short of it is, the more familiar the routines, the more familiar the person, and the more you can keep them close to you within the six months, the better your chance will be of building a more secure attachment, a stronger glue that sticks you to, together for the future. And the, the first six months is pretty critical to trying to do that. So I hope that helps you. That's video number four, and we're gonna move on to video number five next week, where I'm gonna be talking about the next stage kind of or the stage might have happened after three months or it might happen after six months or a little bit longer is attachment and boundary pushing so when the child starts to feel secure and they start to push the boundaries and how you're going to handle that so join me on video number five check out the first four first other three videos if you haven't already and um, i will see you on my adoption channel thank you for watching